Twenty-nine, I guess. Lecture twenty-nine. Um, last lecture, we were looking at various elements within our lives to express them objectively. No Oprah shows. No witnessing. No crying. No Jerry Springer show. We're, we're those are fun to watch, but we're tired of it. We're tired of having people make statements and, and talking to the air and, and making expressions. And there, there are points in our life we merely want to be included into dialogues, into um, discourses, in being, becoming interlocutors to very diverse people, people who could be so-called enemies, talking to people with differing opinions, maintaining free minds, but maintaining valid, blah, blah, valid argumentation. Uh, snowflake culture has, let's call it snowflake modernity, um, has somewhat devolved into incomprehensibility and pure expression, which is cool, but um, where can we enter into a dialogue? It is extremely important to have dialogues with diverse people, with a capital D, I contend, and um, to engage them, to engage them in the analog, um, not entirely using the media mediation of a screen. Um, we noticed a lot of things going on under COVID, this whole Zoom culture to me was an abolishment of space. We had replaced openness and movement in space in my beautiful city of New York, the ability to move around, replaced by huh, the tyranny of time, the taking on a few jobs and where were you, where are you, where are you, can you be there at this point, can you be stationary at a certain time, no, I don't like it. I need exercise, I need fresh air, I need to see other people, I need to be social. I can intersect you anywhere with my phone. So this is a, a con sorry for shaking this, but it's on my stupid Ikea couch during this conversation. Um, that's, that's a subject for a McLuhan tetrad in itself. The, the horrific, the, the inner ring of hell of the Ikea couch for the endurance of quarantine. Um, let's get rid of that. Let's get back to these forms. So um, technology tool, FaceTime, it extends face-to-face real-time interaction. So please place your medium in the middle. And then I have a number of these open squares for you guys to deal with in the creation of blog. Um, it extends. Uh, stronger connection. We live business conducted with partners, professors, colleagues in a face-to-face. -face. You read my micro gestures. Um, you, um, as I told students, anytime we deal with money or love, we want to be in front of the person to actually read the micro gestures. Are we getting robbed or are we or screwed or are we getting a real look of concealed truth behind the person's face because they everyone tends to leak these micro gestures which are extremely important to to maintain we kind of according to an italian scientists we get these mirror neurons still debatable but sounds pretty cool um the ability to read the mirror neurons in each other at ages um, two or three. Some people, namely people on the spectrum, tend not to get these. Um, gross generalization, a lot of reading on that. Um, could footnote it, but I won't right now. Just read my micro gestures. Moving on. These things are fa fabulous. Here a, a young buck is offering a very stylish young maiden the semiotic square. I don't know what. Is she learning? Is it Abelard and Eloise? It, why, why is he offering a gift of the semiotic square in this middle age wood black print? Um, important legacy. Here are a number of other medieval um, sort of wood black prints of, or illuminations of 
kind of paternalistic dudes offering young maidens like learning tools. See a couple semi of the semiotic square down here, uh, Pythagorean uh, geometry here, which f kind of follows the semiotic square. Perhaps Ar Aristotle took or shared this with the ancient cultures of 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 Egyptian geometry. Uh, uh, geometry follows these things if, uh, immensely fascinating and like evolution it still remains it's vestigial that sort of impulse still remains beautiful 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 semiotic squares from the middle ages uh, hand printed hand painted um, beautiful raw rugged um, immensely interesting uses of the semiotic square and so forth how the square itself grows through time and so forth i'm endless endlessly fascinated but i will not fall down that rabbit hole not right now uh, the trivium grammar rhetoric dialect out of aristotle trivium um causality consciousness choice of trivium rhetoric logic grammar grammar um develops facts rule logic relationships between the facts and cause and effect semiotic square or the square opposition rhetoric criticism originality persuasion proof what we do with that um, in ancient greek society oration and roman was a very cool skill and aristophanes has this amazing play i forget what it did the clouds right now where the sun is um, learning the skills of, of, of rhetoric to, you know, win a, a, a loan. Uh, it's a pretty funny play. Uh, and therefore the father wants him to study with some of the better interlocutors. I don't think Socrates shows up in this. Trivium, classical trivium. We have grammar, logic, rhetoric. In esoteric or everything from the classical era up to our, let's just say, scientific era, the 200 years ago, Immanuel Kant, um, James Watt, uh, um, Newton even, um, knowledge, understanding, wisdom. We get the knowledge, we parse it out in understanding, we develop wisdom just like rhetoric was influencing other people, law, a court of laws. Uh, the way law is conducted right now, jurisprudence is kind of medieval, kind of out of this esoteric tradition that we determine the culpability of an individual through a court system of judge, uh, defending lawyers, and a jury. I was in a, being selected for jury, and I said, you know, the way this is working, neurosensors can do a much better job and of course they did not want me to be on the jury so there we go the modern input is we have inputs computer inputs data your data that you're giving big as we saw in the movie a social dilemma um your data input what are you doing where are you going what do you like to see uh what what are you clicking for clickbait um this intermediary of the screen determines a lot. I'm sure it's also doing a voice check. I'm sure the NSA picks this up for some unknown reason. I hope they're not bored. Um, we, we have to question these things. Um, we have to question um, the culture debates. Is, you know, simply because we make cultures, whether it's Inuit culture or Western modern painting or uh, African dance, Indian dance, why, why question it as it might negate our, certainly col study of colonialism would talk about, well, that's because it tried to eradicate that culture. Um, yes, that's a valid form of argument, so we should have that argument with open minds and, and astute minds, so forth. We have inputs internet science empirical science a verifiable experimentation we have processes um this is more lucid we, we assume we know the inputs in modern scientific method and often stem-based universities 
are that way because they propose jobs for the young people to which they are paying into the poker game for, but often to what ends do we employ science, technology, engineering, math? Big question. Big questions a Google search will not provide you. Oh, but Professor, you're being romantic. Of course it could. No, it can't. Um, because of the ambiguity and the processing of analog, digital, biological, neuroendocrinology, um, the, the beautiful soup, as it were, inside your mind, um, the beautiful mysteries and the beautiful soup of processing environment outside. And what is the output um, when Einstein countered Newtonian or expanded upon Newtonian physics? He was able to create the atomic bomb, which would beat Heisenberg to the punch. The Nazis were building the bomb, too, and that was a big race. My great uncle was a, a president of the American Physicists Association, colleague of the Oppenheimer's physicists. And I asked him, why did he do it? And he said, to beat Heisenberg. It's, that's, that's it, man. Everyone knew it. Um, if it falls into the wrong hands. But often, as we see in the Korean War and Vietnam War, they wanted to use the bomb. Um, fortunately, the outputs were still processed by the processing in the trivium, the logic. Do not use it. Um, the rhetoric of using this to end a nasty war and save lives. Save lives for whom? Um, scare whom? Um, this was the whole fabric of the Cold War. We're lurching along. I might get throttled. Hope I don't. Um, more to talk about. Just Facebook reverses into miserable orthodoxy. Yes, it does. We have our feedback loops. Um, McLuhan's tetrad it is applied to Facebook. Oh, McLuhan's dead for many years since the early 80s, I think. How can we do this? We can do it. It's easy. It's wonderful. Uh, we still can. That's the like Life as reality TV. Yes, we become exhibitionists. Um, Instagram, pathetic on many levels, but at least we get the handcrafted view of a beautiful food selfie, self-selfie, uh, 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 rippling abs, twerking, whatever. We get, it's kind of like a gift culture. We get a prize to get a prize. Um, it's a, a primitive, not primitive, it's interesting retrieval of a, of a gift culture. Um, it extends social connections in that gift culture, global social movements. Yes, it is global. Yes, I did get invited all over the world if I posted interesting things. There we go. Um, we have Retrieves Tribal Affiliations 2016. Strangely, a lot happened that year. Um, private obsolescence, emails, blogs, news, social clubs, and obsolescence notions of surveillance as an avoidable evil. Surveillance as the MIT professor, forgetting his name, but he coined the word Seussvalence, willing and Macvalence, um, which he called inst uh, Instagram. Um, the McDonald's of surveillance is um, willful surveillance. Seussvalence, willful surveillance. Um, I'm blanking on his name. Um, but um, MIT professor did all these early notions of surveillance. Innes versus McLuhan. Innes was McLuhan's teacher, another Canadian. Loner, celebrity, political economy, human, humanities, English, literature. Yes, McLuhan was a Shakespeare scholar, so therefore he had a fascination with the square of oppositions rather than empirical science. He is a speculator rather than empiricist, but that's where the fun is. Um, Innes studied the interplay between um, interplay between 